Welcome to the official Autodesk Inventor Podcast. My name is Garen Gardner. I'm an Inventor Product Manager, and this is episode number 38. This episode, we're going to talk a little bit about some of those shortcuts that have been in Inventor since almost day one that some of you have probably discovered, um, many of which you probably didn't know, wasn't aware that they were in the product. So I'm going to start off by, uh, first we'll do some general ones just in the, the general UI that uh, some of the navigation and getting around Inventor. We'll get into some sketch tips and then part modeling and assembly. So the first one I'm going to start off with is the, the view cube in the corner. This is, uh, this is one of the newer ones, but with the, the new view cube, some of you may not have been aware. I would say many of you probably do know that you can select on each of the, the front, right, left. But you can also click and drag and give you a, an orbit tool very similar to hitting F4. It reacts a little bit differently but if you're just trying to quickly navigate around this is a good way to be able to just easily come up click and drag and be able to orbit it around the next one is if you're trying to do some type of presentation and you want to be able to show your boss uh, something about the the product or, or kick off a meeting with a nice model spinning around if you hold your shift key down while you're in the orbit command so if I hold down the shift key drag and let up and that uh, drag with your left mouse button and let up and then let up on the shift key you'll notice that this will just do a continue, uh, continuous orbit so we'll do that one more time I'm holding down the shift key click drag let up on the mouse and then let up on shift and you'll notice that depending on how fast I drag and let up it allow this to, to just spin around freely to be able to see my model the next one is if you're if you use the if you if you use perspective at all in your model this is one of those nice ones that you can actually change that perspective view angle. So if you go into perspective, so in the, the ribbon bar, go to the view, you'll notice that it'll be orthographic, go down to perspective, and then go into your zoom tool, and you'll notice, we'll just hit the drop down, go to zoom. So if I zoom, it, it acts normal, but if I hold the control and the shift key down at the same time, you'll notice that I'm altering that perspective angle. So once I do something like that, I let, I let up on the shift key, and when I rotate this around, you'll notice that it's giving me a much different view uh, viewing angle. So if I wanted to zoom in a little bit and then do the shift and, and rotate, you'd notice that I get more of a fisheye lens type of, of view on this. All right, let's go back to orthographic, and we're gonna go into sketch mode. So let's just take a look at one of these parts. I'm just going to go to a selection filter. We'll go to the part priority. And it doesn't really matter which part I open up. We'll just grab one of these, open it up. And there are a couple of things in the sketch environment that you, you may or may not have been aware of. Let's just go to a sketch. And we'll look straight on that particular view. Now if I have a, a couple of circles out here, we'll do different sized circles. It may be that I want a tangent line that goes between those. And in AutoCAD, would use an O-snap that would be tangent to tangent. In Inventor, many of you may come in and, and pick, and it, you know, it kind of looks like it's it's tangent. This I get a tangent over here, but in actuality, oftentimes that that first point isn't picking up a tangency. We notice that it's not exactly tangent. So one of the things you can do is when you're in the line command, if you click and hold while you drag you'll notice that now it's giving me a tangency on that first circle so as I'm dragging this around it's always tangent to that circle so then if I come over to the other one I can move up to where I see a tangent icon let up and now I've placed a tangent line that's tangent to both sides both the, the left and that right side we'll do that one more time I'll just go into line click and drag so I'm just clicking and dragging I can see it's just following around there on the tangent We'll come down to where we can find that bottom one and apply that. So there we've been able to, in, in just our regular pick and click, we're able to get tangencies on both sides. 
Let's get rid of those. This next one probably many of you have discovered, but I still find it really useful. If I want to put an arc on the end of a line, in the past you may go in and, and do something like pull an arc, pick your start and end point, drag it out to get your tangency, but you can do this all inside of Inventor with one command. So if I go into my line command, click, pick again for my second point. Now if I go to that, that point, and if I click and hold down my left mouse button, you'll notice that depending on whatever quadrant I come out, it's giving me a, an arc in that direction. So if I wanted to do a slot, I can just click and drag it that way, come over here, and then we'll do a click and drag again. One of the things we did in one of the later releases of Inventor is we now add a tangency on that last pick. So now we have tangencies all the way around. We didn't have to go from line to arc. We're doing it all in one command. All right, and then the next one, this is the last one in my part modeling environment. Let's just draw a couple of angled edges here. When I'm pulling a dimension off of here, you'll notice that depending on what I move over, it gives me a little bit different. In fact, um, if we do a, a circle in here as well, and this is something probably most of you have discovered, when I come over, it gives the, the tool tip shows just a little bit differently. If I pick this edge, I can do a horizontal or vertical dimension. Although if I come close, you'll notice that it gives me an aligned icon. And if I just pick again, it's giving me an aligned parametric dimension. Now I can, uh, I can also do the, the same thing if I come in here and say, let's, uh, if I right click, I can come in and do an aligned and it'll do much the same thing. But this is just a great way to be able to easily do it right from, as soon as I see that icon change, I can do it right from there. So those are a couple of tips in the general environment, being able to do the, the view cube rotating, the, the shift and rotate to get it to do a continuous orbit, the control shift zoom to change the perspective, and then in the sketch environment to drag to get that tangent, uh, tangent to tangent on two arcs or circles, drag to get an arc, and then also aligning the dimension. Now let's go into we are in a part, but I'm going to take a look at, um, let's get out of my sketch real quick. We'll just delete that. We don't necessarily need it. And there are times when you need to place work features in your geometry. And, you know, in, probably in the past, if I wanted to put a point that's offset from this face, but on this axis, uh, you would probably come in and do something like, we'll do a, a plane, click and drag to offset a plane however far, come in and put an axis there, and then I can come in and put a point at that plane and that axis. So I can see underneath that point I have this geometry. But instead of going to three different commands to do that, I'm just going to back up. I want a point there, so I'm going to start out with a point. You'll notice if I right click, we can do an inline work feature. Let's, uh, let's go back in there. If I do a right click, I can do a I can, I can first get an axis or a plane. It doesn't matter which because I'm going to use both of them. But I'm going to go off of the axis. So we're going to say we're going to create a point that's using an axis. And then if I right click and go to plane, now I can click and drag that out however far. So I start in the work point. I can tell it to use an axis in the work plane. So it looks very much the same. I have all the inline features in here. And if I want to change anything, if I wanted to change that particular one, we can just edit it and say let's do something like only five millimeters, do an update, and we notice now that that point is much closer. It's five millimeters instead of 40 millimeters. So really the trick here is being able to, if I just want a, a point, that I can do it uh, through an axis and a plane even though I may not have them in my model yet. So just a, an easier way without having to jump back and forth. Now for this next one in the part model, I'm going to go over to my assembly. And let's say that I want to reference some geometry from one of these parts. At um, So let, let, for example, if we go into this particular part, we want to be able to edit this part and reference some edges of one of these other components. Now typically what happens if, you've, if you're using default geometry or, or a default settings in Inventor, as soon as I use project geometry and I select some other edge or face from another part, you'll notice that it by default makes it an adaptive part. So we can see here that it's adaptive and it's also making that sketch adaptive. Now if I'm just wanting to use some of the geometry, 